A subject that came up the other day was the Alton effect and uh, looking into it, basically what Michael Alton, the photographer, did was to take two pictures. The original, as we've got here, he would then take another shot straight after, slightly overexposing it and softening the focus. Then back in the dark room, yes, this is going back to the days of film, he would blend the two shots together. So, I know there's an awful lot of actions out there around the Orton effect, but what I thought I'd do is take a look and see how we can apply it to this image here, as taken by Joe Doyle of joephoto.co.uk, and use it in sort of like this is obviously a wedding picture. I just thought this guy's expression here was absolutely priceless, and seeing how we can sort of move it through a stage further in Photoshop. So, first thing that Michael did was to overexpose the shot. This is the background layer, Command J, Control J, because we can use a single file. We're changing the blend mode to overexpose it to screen. There it is. The next thing we need to do is to put all these layers into one new layer. We're going to click on this icon here to put in a new empty layer. We're going to hold down the Alt or the Option key, so holding down Alt or Option, go into Layer to Merge Visible. That's now combined these layers into this one new layer. We now need to soften. Michael used, you know, used to soften the, the focus and we're going to go to blur, we're going to go to Gaussian blur to do exactly the same thing. This is the sort of look we're after. It does depend on the file size of the image you're looking at, but anything up to the radius of around about 20 pixels can be as low as 9.3 as we've got here. But that's the effect we're after. Click OK to that. Now to blend the pictures together, we're going to change the blend mode to multiply and through it pops. There's the Orton effect. Tremendous on still life. Landscapes, it's fantastic. We're using it here in a wedding picture. It looks a little bit dark around some of the areas, but we can now move this on in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is once again, we need to sort of combine all these layers into one new layer. We could, this time we're going to use a shortcut. We're going to use Command, Option, Shift and E. That's Command, Option, Shift and E, which is Control, Alt, Shift, E. Control, Alt, Shift, E pops all these into one new layer. How quick and easy was that? Image adjustment, dropping down to shadow and highlights. When shadow and highlights opens, you can immediately see the difference. There's the before, there's the after. I've actually got the show more options dialog box ticked. Come into the shadows. We're just going to move this across and just bring this until you get the effect we're after. Something like that there looks pretty good. The tonal width dropping down to this slider. Again, moving this across something in that area there looks pretty good. And you can see this Orton effect gives a wonderful dreamy look to it. And now bringing the most out of this using the shadow and highlights. So bringing this through like that. Coming down to the highlight slider. This uh, for me is one of the important ones, particularly with a wedding picture like this, is we want to bring out the detail that are it's in this dress here, that looks pretty good around that area. The tonal width, again playing with this, I'm just taking the tonal width back slightly. Something like that looks pretty good there. The radius, again just playing with it. You can see the effect it's having, it's just, you can see the tones changing there on her shoulder as we come through. That looks good like that. Colour correction, boost this up and nope, drop it back the other way and you can see you can begin to take the colour out. You can really make those ties glow but I think we'll just pop it down slightly there. Plus 20 is the default. That looks a little bit better. Let's just take a look. There's the before, there's the after. Clicking OK to that. Moving this on slightly again. If we go to Image, Adjustment, dropping down to Match Color. Now with Match, wrong one, Command Z or Control Z to undo. What I said was, if we go to, not Desaturate, which is the last one I clicked on, we're gonna to go to Match Color, right, OK, click in Neutralize, and you can see it adds a little bit more magenta to the image. I quite like that. We're just going to fade it back ever so slightly, something in that sort of area. That looks pretty good. OK, color intensity. You can see the colors are pretty intense as they are, so we're going to drop this back very, very slightly into that area. That looks better. And the luminance, once again, if we can just play with this. I'm just going to take the luminance up a little bit, again, just enhancing that dreamy look. And if we just take a look before, after, only a slight effect, but it really does sort of help to move the image on. It just gives some nice tones into the image as well. Right, the one thing I'm not sort of particularly keen on is the lights up in the top but here. Can't be avoided though. So we're going to pick up the rectangular marquee tool, a very quick and easy way to get rid of this. Just going to click down, 
over that area there looks pretty good just making sure we sort of drop it below the sticker which says where he bought the car from command J control J we've duplicated it to its own layer next we're going to use command T or control T to put the transform tool around this and we're quite literally just going to drag that across like this there's a little bit of a step if you bring your cursor inside right click choose warp you can go to the first bar up the second bar down depending which way you want to look at it and just drop this down slightly you see the way you can bend the curvature so that becomes in with the roof line in pressing enter or return if you look at it and you think it's just a little bit on the bland side don't be afraid to add a little bit of noise to that that will just help to sort of bring that down and something else while we're at it let's pick up the rect so the rectangular the making all these mistakes today picking up one of these freehand lassos just coming around that area like that just quickly around there if we come down we're going to go to hue saturation just going to bring out going to click on this it's going to go into the yellows thank you very much if you're not using lcs4 just pick yellow just drop this down a little bit just to take the sting out of that lighten effect like that you can even move the the hue slider along and just until you get a cooler effect something like this and just brighten that up slightly as well and you can see the way you can just sort of play with that just to remove that little bit of a sting that we had going on there with the color effect there it is just removing that slightly so there it is taking a look through this is the original and you can see the difference that makes to the image it does give a lovely lovely a lovely romantic glow to the image looks absolutely fantastic i did take this a stage further as well by adding in the where's it gone there that lighting effects uh, this you'll find as a separate tutorial it's a downloadable video on my website but i'll just bring you through that burst of sunlight in the background there but there it is that's the image we've just been working on as I've said, uh, there's the original. This is what we call the Michael Orton effect. Taking it through a stage further, though, using Photoshop. Go on, give it a try. Until the next time, happy imaging and take care.